Welcome in Mountaineer Nation. I'm Sam the Man, and this is the Mountaineer Effect. This year was a tumultuous year where watching WVU football was very difficult. And we did get to 6-6, six and six and we're going to get a bowl game. We'll find out what that is on Sunday. West Virginia released their schedule for next year. I can't help but look at it and say, <sighs> another year like that, and some of us just may not make it. And take a look at the schedule and make some predictions here on Sam's way too early prediction show. Haven't already? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're over 600 subscribers now, which means we're going to start doing some giveaways. Be sure you tune in for that. West Virginia will open up the season against the Pitt Panthers in Pittsburgh. Now, it's about time we get Pitt back on. I'm very happy about that. But I'm really happy that we didn't play them this year because I don't think we dealt with them this year. I think they're a really good football team. However, in 2022, they're going to be losing their quarterback draft, moving on, and trying to re rebuild. I think West Virginia sneaks into Pittsburgh, gets a victory. Uh, just because of veteran quarterback Jared Dagey, I'm going to say probably around a three-point victory over the Pittsburgh Panthers for the first game of the season. Second game of the season, they're going to be taking on the Kansas Jayhawks at home. Now, Kansas gave a fit to a few teams this year. West Virginia squeaked out a victory over them. I think it's going to be a lot like that next year. I think Kansas has found their quarterback and a good one. They're Monochrome for success is going to keep growing. They're going to get better and better, but they're not going to win Morgantown. I have West Virginia by probably 10 points in that game. Third game of the season features our cupcake, Towson. I think West Virginia blows them out by at least 40 points. Of course, that's what that game is. So in the first quarter of the season, I have West Virginia essentially going 3-0. and Now, to open up week four, West Virginia travels to Blacksburg to take on yet again another big rival, Virginia Tech Hoagies. Now, Virginia Tech, we're welcoming a new coach. They've got some rebuilding to do, but it's very hard to win at Lane State. I mean, Lane State. Very hard to win. I think with the squeak, out that we have this year it's going to be much of the same next year but it will not go in our favor i have that as our first loss of the season next year in blacksburg the fifth game of the season as is going to play the texas longhorns in texas now steve sarkeesian he is on the hot seat i think he's in over his head i think it's just a matter of time before they fire him and move on to somebody that can actually acclimate Texas to the SEC. I think we go to Texas. They have B. Sean Robinson healthy. It's going to be a very different game. I think West Virginia will struggle with Texas. I don't see us winning that game either. I think it'll be a nail-biter, but Texas will pull out the victory. That'll give West Virginia their second loss. The sixth game of the season as the Baylor Bears coming into Morgantown. Now, my recollection, Baylor has never won in Morgantown. Don't think they'll do it this year. Good as Baylor was this year, they're losing some key pieces. I think they come into Morgantown. West Virginia squeaks out a victory. Now, in week seven, we travel to Lubbock, Texas to take on Texas Tech. That one's easy. We lose. Hill Brown is 0-3 against Texas Tech. Can't quite figure out how to beat them. I don't think that's going to change this this year with, with the team that they have. I think we go to Texas Tech and get beat probably handed yet again. The next game is um, going to be TCU at Morgantown. Now, that's a really coin flip of a game. 
Gary Patterson being gone is really going to be interesting to see how TCU recovers. They'll either really rally around their new coach or they're going to probably see some kids portal out and they're going to struggle. I personally think they're going to struggle. I think they're going to come into Morgantown and get blown. As we get towards the end of the season, around November the 5th, West Virginia will travel to Ames, Iowa and take on Iowa State. Finally, Brock Purdy is gone. I think Iowa State's going to struggle to recover, even though they have one of the best coaches in the country. I think West Virginia goes into Iowa State, takes out a tiny little victory in Ames. One of the most important games on the schedule, Saturday, November the 12th, against Oklahoma in Morgantown. As we all know, Lincoln Riley absconded, left town. We don't know who Oklahoma's next coach is going to be yet. But we do know they will recover. Spencer Radler is portaling out. Or about Caleb Williams. We don't know what's going to happen. There is a lot of questions about this. Is this the year West Virginia finally jumps the shark? I want to say yes. But the truth of it is, is, I don't think Bill Brown's got it in him to beat Oklahoma. I think that's another loss and a hard loss because it's at home. Oklahoma, a lot of people think they're going to struggle to recover, but I really don't. I think they're going to come out. I think Lincoln Riley's going to be leaving is going to be one of the best things that's ever happened. The following game is Kansas State at home. I think West Virginia can beat Kansas State. You know, they're up and down. You know, the whole Big 12's up and down. You know, you could say that about every single game. But I think that's another victory that West Virginia can pull pull out. The last game of the season has West Virginia traveling to Stillwater to take on little brother, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. I think... Oklahoma State has the potential to get into the Final Four this year and compete for a national championship. I think they're going to be back up to form next year. I do not see West Virginia traveling to Stillwater to win. I have Oklahoma State this game handed. I have West Virginia finishing seven and five, which is a you know a, a tiny improvement over the six and six year we have this year. You, know, you have to remember we were fifteen points from being a two loss team this year. So we would expect almost the same going into next year. Going from a six and six year to a seven and five year is an improvement, but it's not much. So my question is, if that's how we do next year, how do we feel about keeping Neil Brown around after that? I'm a firm believer that you have to give a man four to five years to get his players in, get his system in. Then you can grade him fairly. So next year will be what I really look at as is Neil Brown going to work out for the West Virginia. Seven and five season would put us probably in the middle of the Big 12, nowhere near the top. Um, so there's going to be a lot of detractors that's going to want Neil Brown gone after. I don't think there's any way that we get to nine victories next year. Schedule is just too hard. Um, the Big 12 is too unpredictable. So, much like this year, next year we're looking at the exact same kind. Of I think next year, um, for me, is the make or break year. If he can get to 7 and 5 and get to a decent bowl game, win the bowl game, you know, that gives us an eight win per year. But, you know, we're really pushing it at that point. Six and six this year really was a miracle for this team. I hope that they can get a good ball game and pull out that seventh win. But Mountie Nation doesn't want mediocrity. We don't want to get stuck in that mediocrity. And I think Neil, Neil Brown needs to address that head on um, and, and let everybody know that he's not settling for mediocrity. That, you know, trusting the climb is you know, a slogan, but 
we're actually making progress um, to get up to an elite level. There's a lot of things that's that's going to go into it next year, and it's going to be an interesting year. But this is Sam's way too early prediction. I'll probably do another one as we get closer to the season, and we can actually see what the landscape looks like. I'm Sam the Man. This is the Mountaineer Effect. Thanks for tuning in. Let's go Mountaineers. Thank <laughs> you.